<clears throat> and y'all have all heard this before, I'm sure. It says, I have discovered the principle of life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart, but there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God the answer is Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see how it is. In my mind, I really want to obey God's law. But because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. This was in my devotion this morning. And it was the, a different version where he's going back and he's saying, I want to do good, but I didn't do good. I wanted to do good, but I, I didn't. And, he, you know, he's going back and forth in that chapter. And um, I got to thinking about it, and I was like, you know, poor Paul. <laughs> he, he became very transparent there, you know. I, and there's not a person in this room, I'm sure, that hasn't felt that way before. God, I want to do what's right, but my goodness, my flesh just keeps creeping up. I, I want to, I'm trying, Lord, I'm trying. Um, and what that can cause us to do sometimes is get our focus off of him, and we start looking at ourselves we're like, oh, I just can't get it together. I just can't do it right. It becomes about I, 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 me, me, me. Well, if we move on over to verse eight, uh, chapter 8, verse 1. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. In verse 2, and because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. When we are constantly focused on I, 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 me, 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 I messed up, I didn't get it right, I went the wrong way, I made the wrong choice, and we focus on that and we end up driving ourselves in the ground about it, we forget that who, who who's we are, who, who, who we are and who we belong to, and what he's done for us to help us not have to, to live in condemnation. God does not bring condemnation. If you're living in condemnation, that is not from God from the enemy so tonight what I want us to do is if you're struggling in any area where you feel like you're just constantly thinking about I, I, you know I need to do this different I need to do that I, I need to make different choices I, maybe there's something in your life that you need to change and you're struggling with that or you need to give up or you need to push aside for a while whatever it is tonight I want us to take our focus off of that and I want to put our focus on him, on the one who has given us freedom because of his spirit. And if we have his spirit, we can live in freedom tonight. And so I want us to pray. I want you to take those thoughts, and I want you to just verbally give them over to God tonight. I want you to just sacrifice them on the altar, offer them up and say, here it is, Lord. And, you know, we all know he'll step in and he'll help us. He, he's going to guide us. But sometimes get overwhelmed with things um, but I want us to remember that there's no condemnation to those who belong to Christ and he wants us to live in freedom he wants us to live in knowing and in the security that we have the power that we can overcome and get through anything so let's go to the Lord together tonight remember um, all those that are traveling and that are not doing well we want to still remember brother Warren tonight
spirit. Man, thank you, Jesus. We'll have our ushers to come on up. For being here. Thank you for worshiping with us. And I uh, pray everybody's had a great week. And uh, it, it has been a great week, but it has been a hot week. And uh, I'm hoping, I'm just praying, Paul, that we've got a cold front coming through somewhere. I don't know. They said Elijah went seven times to pray and there was a little cloud. Maybe we might get a little, a little cold front come through somewhere. I don't know. Amen. It's been a great week, and uh, uh, I've got just a good study tonight, some stuff that I have learned over time, and uh, stuff I'm still learning, and I've been in study this week, and uh, how many's got a Bible with them? Amen. Uh, why don't you, let's open up our Bibles. I want to read for just a minute, and uh, I want to read in Luke chapter 13, and uh I want to use this scripture just to make a small point. Uh, so I don't necessarily want to use the, the uh, context in its entirety. Uh, I just want to use one little 
one little point at the end. But we'll read just a few verses just to give some clarity. And you can, uh, you can remain seated if you'd like. Luke chapter 13. And uh, <clears throat> in verse 23. Luke chapter 13, beginning with verse 23. And the Bible says, Then said one unto him, Lord, talking to Jesus here, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. Now this is Jesus' response. Now this person came up and said, You know, is it, is there only just going to be a few that's going to be saved? And so this is Jesus' response. And, I, you know, I'm assuming the response that he's given here is very important. Uh, he's talking about being saved. And I don't know about y'all, but I, I, I don't want to not be saved. I don't want to be a part of them small few that ain't, that ain't there. I want to be a part of that number. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he says to strive to enter in at the straight gate. That tells me there's more than one gate. He says, for many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able to. Um, verse 25, when once the master of the house is risen up and has shut to the door and you begin to stand without and to knock at the door saying, Lord, Lord, open up unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence you are. He's talking about what's going to happen. In verse 26, then shall you begin to say, we have, we've eaten and we've, we've drunk in thy presence and, 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 and you've taught in our streets, Lord. We, we, we know who you are. But he says he's going to respond and he says, I tell you, I, I know you're not whence you are. He says, you might know me, but I don't know you. A lot of people know Jesus, but Jesus don't know them. And he says, depart from me, all ye. Now, here we go. Verse 27. If he might be catching up. That computer up there can be aggravating sometimes. Verse 27, he says, but he shall say, I tell you, I know not whence you are. Depart from me, all ye. Somebody finish it with me. Of iniquity. Okay. And uh, I, I want to talk to you, if you want to put a subject on it, I, I want to talk to you about committing yourself to good works. Uh, not just works, but good works. Uh, something that just stands out to me there is it, it said that they were workers. I've read this for years and it just kind of stood out to me. I look at them and I'm thinking, well, they're just carnal jerks and they're not doing nothing for God and they're they're just they're just sowing their wild oats living how they want to live but it said that they were workers it said they were workers Mike and I saw that and I'm like wow because I've always thought man these people that's like this they're, they're just going to be lazy they're going to be not doing nothing for God but he, he said that these people were workers they were workers they worked but they worked in iniquity and if you don't know what iniquity is, it's not just sin, but it's iniquity is working in the way that I think I ought to work. Uh, is a good term you could term it with. It's called self-rule, living by the beat of your own drum, uh, making your own decisions, living by the seat of your pants, living how you want to live, okay, by your own will. And Jesus said that these people will seek to enter in, but they won't be able to. And so these folks will be seekers. They'll be workers. They'll be laborers. Right? That's what it said. But they won't be seekers of the right things. They, they won't be workers working after good works. They won't be laboring after the kingdom of God. And uh, this is a place that uh, I, I've seen a lot of uh different folks walk in this area I, I have made mistakes before and I've had to recognize but but this is a place that we as Christians must be aware that exists 
is that you can be a worker. You can dwell in the house of the Lord and not be working for God. Because it said that they were workers. They were laborers. They were seekers. It said they went to the gate and were asking to come in. They were familiar with the territory. They weren't just people, I, don't, I just think I'm just going to mosey over here and see if I can catch me some eternal life. No, no, no. They, they were familiar with the territory according to the Scripture. So this is a place that we've got to be aware that exists. It's a place that can be very easily adopted. Uh, and, and the once willing and yielding, just like we talked about Sunday, the once will, willing and yielding life of someone that was willing to work for God has now focused themselves to being willing and yielding to some other focus. And anything that's not God focus is an idol focus, right? So you got to understand that any work not done under the Lord can become a dangerous place for iniquity or self rule to abound. Don't get lost for a minute, okay? Don't think we got to go around like a bunch of monks and all we can talk about is Jesus and we can't work and we can't live and we can't eat because all we got to do is go out into the streets and just just tell people Jesus' name and all this stuff. We, we, we got to live, and I think Jesus understands that. He lived. He took time to rest. He took time to eat. He took time to pray. He took time to fellowship. He took time to throw the tables over uh, in the temple. He took time to do all kinds of different things, okay? So, the, so there is priority here. We're just talking about priority. So, but in, in most places in the New Testament, there are many warnings in the latter days that the church will be turned, their hearts will be turned, their love will diminish, their lust for iniquity and their desire to work after their own things will increase. And so all the while, it's all happening while sitting on the pew. Because it said they were workers. The Bible even talks about how the elect uh, or the folks faithful to their calling will be shaken and be sifted if they aren't rooted well. Even the elect will, will be done that way. And to be a little bit more specific, this is a place that is at all times dangerously close to any and every Christian. It's just within an arm's reach to where we become workers for God, but then we get distracted along the way. We're not very focused anymore. And, and, and we're workers. We're here. We're, we're laborers in the house. But somewhere along the way, we got distracted, and we really aren't working for God anymore. Right? And so it, it's the place where, uh, for instance, Sunday sermons can take the place of weekly devotions in ministry. It's a place where a Thursday night prayer call as we listen to the prayer of someone else as we do, it takes the place of my voice and it takes the place of my prayer. And that's about all the prayer that gets done is just that call. It's the place where prayer becomes optional during inconvenient times instead of mandatory. Uh, it, it's a place where I make defining and life-changing decisions without praying or consulting with my leadership. It, it's this kind of place that I can slip slowly and everything seems okay. Everything seems like because I'm, I'm showing up and I'm working. But, but it said there that they were workers of iniquity. They were workers. And so this place, uh, you know, all, all along the knowledge of the danger is not necessarily evident because we can become satisfied with the amount of effort given into our worship service given into a Sunday school class involvement uh, or, or, or whatever the case may be. Uh, and it makes you feel and think as though all is well when all, in actuality, I, I'm walking towards uncharted waters. It, it's kind of a dangerous place to be. Uh, anybody with glasses, anybody wear glasses here, I see a few folks, would understand that your eyes don't change overnight. You can have the same pair of prescription glasses for about a year or two or maybe even three years, and you really won't notice anything. But when you go get a new prescription and you put those things on, you're like, whoa, I didn't realize how, what I was putting myself through. I really couldn't see very good at all. I was straining my eyes, and I didn't have very good vision. It doesn't happen overnight. It, it, it's over a course of 
days and months and, and, and weeks and years. And before you really know it, if you really don't focus yourself and try to recognize this place, you're walking along and you're thinking, man, I'm walking as, as I always have. Everything's fine. I got my glasses on and I'm walking and I'm showing up and everything's good. But if we don't take time to recognize and assess this and we say, God, you know, help me bring some clarity right now, then we're thinking all along where we're working. Everything's going great. But we're walking around in all actuality. We, we really can't see very good. And so we make small decisions that have big impacts in our lives and in the life of others. And so there's repercussions that, that go beyond us. And, and it's just a dangerous place to be in. But it's the same in this aspect. The Lord spoke to the seven churches of Asia Minor under the writing of John. And one of the churches he writes to is the church of Thyatira. And it's in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 19. If you want to follow along with me, please. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 19. Talking about good works. And so in this letter here, he's using John to write. And he's writing to this church and he explains it here in verse 19. He says, he says I know your works. He says, look, and charity, which is love, and your service, and your faith, and your patience, and your works. He mentions it again. I know the works that you're doing. I know the sacrifice you're making. You know, he, he says, and, and last to be more than the first. He says, I, I, I know your works. I know your, your sacrifice, and I know all these things that you're doing. He says in verse 20, notwithstanding, I have a few things against you, though. He says, because thou hast suffered that woman Jezebel, everybody know who that is? Which calleth herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. You got to understand here, taking a pause, the spirit of Jezebel does just this. It encourages and promotes doing whatever it is that your flesh likes. That's what the spirit of Jezebel does. Go read about Jezebel when she did, she did things. She, 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 she leaned into hatred and, 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 and vileness, and she caused contention, and she caused rumors, and she was sowing discord, and, and she was turning people around, and she brought idolatry into the, into the camp of Israel again, and they were worshiping idols, all of these different things. It's, it's, if you look at the, the, the smaller picture, if you kind of focus in, it's not just, well, she's just an idol worshiper. No, she brought in whatever felt good to the flesh. Let me get on our level. When we come in here on Sunday morning and it's worship time, I'm much more comfortable sometimes just kind of sitting there getting through it where I can hear the word, right? Because to worship an invisible God is hard. My flesh don't like that invisible faith stuff. And so the spirit of Jezebel causes us to want to do things in iniquity. We, we, we walk by the beat of our own drum. I, I don't want to worship. I think I'm fine just like I am, and I, I think I'll just sit here and, and I'll just believe in the God that I believe in, and, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll just, it's comfortable for me. That's what my flesh likes. My flesh don't like getting up here and doing all kinds of stuff. My flesh don't like praying, especially when we ought to. That's why that scripture said that we ought to boldly become the, before the throne of grace in the time of need. That's because that's the time we need it most. But when we do need it most, most of the time, that's the last thing we want to do. I, I'm a witness. When I need to pray or when I'm in a place to where I'm like, Lord, I, I know I need to pray, that's the time that my flesh fights me the most. My flesh don't want to do that right now. Instead of trust God, I'd rather make a couple phone calls and say, hey, man, I'm tight on money. You got some work I could do? Rather than trust God. Oh, I'm at the head of the class there. I, I, God's teaching me right now. But that's what my flesh likes. My flesh don't like trusting God sometimes. My flesh don't like that. Anybody see that tag on the front of the car that says, Jesus is my co-pilot? You've heard me say that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life because you're still driving. You're going in the direction that you want to go in. As long as you're driving, you'll always rule yourself by your own will. We got to get out of the driver's seat and let Jesus drive. 
I don't care what you say about, well, he's telling me the directions. Yeah, okay. Fat chance. But this spirit of Jezebel, she just promotes doing anything that our flesh likes, lust. Fornication, hatred, causing controversy, sowing discord, gossip, lording over individuals, being mean and fussing about stuff. It's just flesh gone rambunctious. That's what it is. And apparently, going back to our text, apparently this has occurred in this church. They had started, they really stopped praying. Uh, they'd gotten in their flesh. They were making decisions in the flesh. And they were workers they were workers, they were laborers, they were seekers, but yet they weren't seeking the will of God and they weren't working for the kingdom of God and they really weren't praying the will of God to be done in their lives. It was just, let's just show up and do the things we've always done. And he continues in verse 21. He says, and I gave her space to repent of her fornication and she repented not. He says, behold, I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her are, are those that have let in, leaned into it, that have partaken willingly, knowing better. It says, and then that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. He says in verse 23, and I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. Here we go. We got it? And I will give unto every one of you, finish it, Go on. works. Whatever works you've done, good works, bad works, lukewarm works, whatever you want to call it. But he says that he is going to give unto us, every one of us, according to our works. So it's not the fact that they were lazy or they weren't working or they didn't do anything. It's that their work became perverted. They allowed it to be perverted. And what they originally began doing for God with great intention, it slowly drifted into a place where flesh ruled, flesh controlled, and it was all to the gratification of the flesh, what I like to do. And that's a dangerous place to be when folks get into that place, and it's a dangerous place to be when a church gets into that place, and they're just in a rut. Well, we want to have this type of sermon, and we want to have this type of worship service, and we want to have this type of ending, and that's just how we want it. And, and I'm going to tell you, God's not in any of that because it, it's, it's, it's flesh-ruled. I don't know about y'all, but I don't want to. I don't want to walk by my own flesh because I can. I've, I've I've seen it before. I have deceived my own self before. I, I've I've interpreted and perceived feelings and made decisions based upon that. And then later on, I learned that those feelings were just fickle. I, I was just in a mood or something, or I woke up in a in a in a space and I I, I made wrong decisions and 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 this, hey. He's learning to talk. He's okay. But it's a dangerous place to be in. So it's a place that as long as we have the knowledge of it, we can learn along and along to recognize the fruit of stuff like this. When, when contention arises and when problems arise and when we have emotions and feelings in us that cause us to sin and, and move into that direction, it ought to be red flags, red flags. You need to take time to pray. You need to take time to get along with God. You've been walking in your flesh. You've been thinking in your flesh. You've been making decisions in your flesh. And so that ought to be red flags for every Christian to say, whoa, I need to take a step back. I might need to push the plate back and just kind of get, get focused here. Because it's not a matter of working. It's not a matter of working. It's a matter of who we're working for. It's a matter of what we're working towards. It's, ma it's a matter of what we're working on and who we're working on and, and where we're walking to and who we're entertaining. That's what matters. And so we've got to get to a place to where we recognize that. Uh, you know, th this is a place where as maturing Christians, we, we must be able to recognize and assess and make 
adjustments as needed in our walk with God. Listen to this, and I'm, I'm, I'm moving along. Paul writes to Titus in Titus chapter 3 and verse 8. He writes to him and says in Titus 3 and 8, This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. So that tells you right there, even from Paul's experience, that even he knew that it was hard sometimes to maintain good works. Because it's easy to show up and just put forth your same amount of effort and then a year, six months, God forbid, 10 years, 15 years down the road, you look back and you're like, I really ain't got nowhere spiritually. I'm probably a little bit more carnal than what I used to be. I really don't know God any better than I did 20 years ago or five months ago. I really don't know more of my word than I did five months ago. And we've been working and in, 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 uh, trying to apply ourselves to a place to where we've been working, but we really ain't been working towards the right thing. And don't think, don't, don't get me wrong, this is not something that is just for, uh, uh, I'm going to use the word babes in Christ. This is something that, like I said, is dangerously close to any and every Christian, no matter the uh, how many years you got in. Okay, we'll just put it that, your seniority, excuse me, that's what I was trying to get to. No matter your seniority level, it's dangerously close at any time. Uh, But he says to be careful to maintain good works. Just a chapter before, he's writing to Titus uh, still in chapter 2 and verse 13. He says, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us, okay? Let's see, I'm in verse uh, 14, yeah. That's, that's good. You're on it. Thank you. Who gave himself for us. Now, I want you to get this, that he might redeem us from all iniquity. Now, can, I, you just kind of give me an amen if you testify or whatever. Jesus has all power, right? He don't have no problem in the redeeming department, right? Re- redeeming department. But it says that he might redeem us. It's not the fact that he doesn't have the power to redeem us. It's the fact that he has trouble redeeming those who won't allow him to redeem them. Because it says that he might redeem us from all. That's that's the self-rule. See, God created us with the power of choice. And if we just don't want God, he's not going to force us on him or himself on us. He's just not. And so that's where the might comes is It's not his redeeming power. He's got all power in heaven and earth and the universe. Uh, uh, the universe don't contain God. God contains the universe. He has all power in his hand. So it's, it's not in his hand, in his ability. It, it, it's all a part of, of where we are. That he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself, here we go, a peculiar people, zealous of good works those who are focused on good works, those who are focused on, on being focused. Does that make sense? Uh, I, I, I have, maybe I've got a testimony, I don't know, I guess, that all the years that I, I, I grew up in church for everybody who, who may not know, okay, I, I was born, I think, on a Monday and on Wednesday I was here, okay, I believe. And uh, I have seen this in myself for a long, long time. Uh, sitting on a pew, I, I have learned it firsthand that being a preacher's kid, growing up in a church, don't mean nothing. That don't make you any more spiritual than a dead frog, okay? Because for years I sat on the pew, and I was as spiritual as a dead frog. I was as carnal as could be. I, I did not know God like I should. I wasn't praying like I should. Wasn't doing, but I was here. Haley, I was here. I was cutting the lights on, and I was playing them instruments. 
and I was making sure the communion cups were, were ready with Brother Charles, and I was making sure the chairs was lined up, and I was making sure that Windex was on them glasses back there, man. I was making sure it was all ready to go, but I was not working for God. I was not, it, it, don't get me wrong, it was for his house, and I thank God, he, he told the church in Revelation, the Thyatira, I, I've seen your works, I've seen your sacrifice, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not throwing off on that, but I've got a few things against you because I was working all along, Mike, but I wasn't working for the kingdom of God because if all I do is just work in God's house, I really ain't got nowhere. In fact, in the book of Acts, they got out of the temple to go bring people in. If all we do is stay in the house, we really ain't got nowhere. And so I've seen this firsthand. It's very easy for any Christian for it to grab a hold to you, and you really don't know that it's got a hold to you until damage is done somehow, whether it's your life, somebody else's life, your marriage, your relationship, your children, your job, whatever. But, but it's close to any and everybody. Listen to this in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. He says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Everybody see that? This is where our focus needs to be now. Not only thinking about good works or hearing somebody talk about good works for God or for the kingdom of God, but it says that he has before ordained that we don't just know him, that we don't just sit under the preacher and listen to him preach. What's it say? That we should. That means we, we cover ground. And we, we make distance. That we walk in them. So our, our duty and our responsibility, <coughs> excuse me, as people called to a higher calling is to do nothing more than to bring glory back to God through good works. Because if all we do is just work, but it's not towards him, we're really not getting anywhere. And so we, we've got to focus ourselves. I, I, don't, I don't know if most of you are aware of what happened just Sunday, but not only has the Lord given us a prophetic insight of, of the season we're leaving and the season we're entering in. But, but this week, I have personally seen fruit of this season. Take, take it for what you want, okay? I've seen it with my own eyes. Fruit of the season that we're entering into that God has told us through many voices that we're fixing to enter into. We're entering into a season of bringing forth, Okay? We are. I, 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 I've seen it. There's a newness just on the horizon. And so we've got to focus ourselves to be ready for this newness. Uh, one, one of my prayers has been for some time, uh, is that, I'm trying to word it right, I've asked God to take care of the things that have been worrying all of us and, and nagging at us for so long so we can focus ourselves on his work. When you got 10 things beating you down and they're kicking your seat in the pants and they're knocking you down and you got this bill you're worrying about and you got this person you're dealing with and you got this problem on the job and you got this one having to work weekends every now and then and it's getting into the church schedule and they've got all this stuff we're having to deal with. I prayed for some time, God, give us, give us just a, a release. Give us some increase. Move these things out of the way so we can focus ourselves to what really matters. Help our finances. Touch our families. Touch our marriages, God. Give, give us the increase needed so that we can focus about your work and about your kingdom. But we do have to take note that when the increase comes, that we don't just sit there doing the same old thing. We got to be ready that when the increase does make its way into our lives, we say, okay, he's made a way. Now let's get back to work. Let, let's go. Let's start covering ground. Let's start walking in good works that he has before ordained that we walk in. But because he, he's, he's made a way. He's provided all the tools for us to have. 
He's provided everything. All we've got to do is be willing to do it. And not just work, but, but perform good works for his kingdom, for his glory. Amen, somebody? Listen, God said he would take care of it. God said he would take care of us, and we've got to release our faith and our hopes into this promise that he's going to take care of us. We, 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 we don't have to worry ourselves into a frenzy and get ulcers on our stomachs and all kinds of crazy stuff and going to the doctor two or three times a week. He's going to take care of us. And so we've got to take our faith and our hope and put it in the promise and then take our focus and put it on the work of God. Because he's faithful. Has anybody ever been lacking enough to where, where, where you can say, God didn't answer your prayer? God left me for dead? Is anybody in this place? I think he's brought us all through. I think some of us have seen some rock bottom. I've been there lately. But he has brought me through. He has brought provision. He has, he's, he's lifted us up. He's given us what we needed. He gave us our daily bread. Amen? That's, that's something to give God praise about. That's something to say thank you in our prayers. That's something to say thank you, Lord, for giving me breath again. Even when I wasn't thankful for the breath you gave me yesterday, he's taking care of us. And so we, we got to hold on to the promise. Amen. We got to focus ourselves. We got to understand, and I'm, I'm getting ready to close in a minute, that folks are standing by watching us. And we've got to be ready to tell folks about the God that we serve that has come through for us. Folks is watching us struggle, and they're watching us pray, and they're watching us continue to work and continue to, to show up. And when God does come through, we ought not to just sit there like ain't nothing happened. Amen. They're watching us. They're watching how we're going to respond when God does answer your prayer. They're watching whether it works for you. Because I don't know if anybody knows, that, that, that's the biggest thing we've got going as far as getting the gospel out is, is the testimony that we have. I've got a testimony that can touch a few people. Paul, you've got a testimony that can touch a few people. Danny, you've got a testimony that could touch a few people. Miss Mina, you've got a, a testimony that could touch a few people. We might not be able to touch everybody as an individual, but when we activate and we come together as the body of Christ, we, 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 our options are limitless. We, we, we've, we've got connections. We've got contact in every direction, and that's where God can use the body of Christ to sow in to their lives, to sow love into their lives and strength into their lives. It's just where we're at. God's fixing to come through, and we've got to be ready to go forward with our testimony and tell them what God's done in my life because I don't want you to tell me what he did in the Scripture only, but to tell me what he's done for your life. I don't know if you like one of vacuum uh, cleaner salesmen. Uh, if you don't tell me what it's done for your house, and if let me tell you, if you don't have one and you're trying to sell me one, can I be rude for a minute? You're a moron. You are. You're trying to sell me Jesus and you don't have no testimony? But everybody in this place does. Even if you, if you've, even if you don't realize it, you've got to take time. That's, as, a, as a maturing Christian, you've got to take time to recognize what God has done for you, what he's done in your life, what he's proven to himself and in your life. And then we go forward with that and say, let me tell you what Jesus did for me. Let me tell you how he healed my marriage. Let me tell you how he touched my mind when I thought I was going to go crazy. Let me tell you how he took this addiction out of my life. Let me tell you how he took the taste away for whatever it was. Let me tell you how he put me back together. Let me tell you how he touched my heart when I was down and out and I didn't feel like I was going to make it again. This has got to be our mission every day is not only to give God glory and praise, but to tell somebody how he's kept us, how he's keeping us right now how he's led us, how he's provided for us when there, listen, where there weren't no aces in your pocket. Anybody else an ace holder like me? I like keeping an ace right there in case God don't come through. That's how I used to be. And then about three months ago, God started challenging that ace in my pocket. And when I didn't change, Mike, you know what he did? He took them from me. I ain't got no more aces. But since then, God has proven to me, okay, can I testify now? 
Is that okay? God has proven himself again to me and to my precious wife and our boy that he will keep us. All we've got to do is maintain, keep working for God, keep doing what he's called you to do. I'll take care of your food. I'll take care of your money. I'll take care of your mind. I'll take care of your household. I'll take care of your relationships and your marriage. You just work for me. Love me. I'm standing before you as a witness. I've been to rock bottom lately, at least I have in my life, and, and, and God has brought me up. So if you were wondering if there was a God, there is. He, he, just a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago, he brought me up off the rocks. But we don't need to write off any opportunity to tell somebody about the goodness of God. You got to wake up like Jesus and say, I've got work and I'm about my father's business. I know we got to work, and that's fine. Jesus knows that too. But every day when we get up, our minds ought to be on how in the world can I sow good works today into somebody's life, into somebody's ministry, into somebody's family? How could I sow the gospel? How could I sow good works into somebody's family? What, in, in whatever way, how could I do that? Oh, listen, this isn't the time to get distracted with anything else. We need to put all kind of tomfoolery away. It's not time to get off in left field and, 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 and cause a bunch of molehill problems in the mountains. We ought not to do that because there's souls in the balance. There are. I'm, I'm getting ready to close now. One of the ways, one of the best ways to increase your effectiveness as a worker of God is to learn to look at the people you serve, learn to look at the people you teach, learn to look at the people that you work with, learn to look at all the people that you're around daily as souls, not just your friend, not just your uncle, not just your coworker, not just your buddy you've had for 20 years, but as a living soul. Because one day these souls are going to be judged along with ours. And if you don't realize it or not, we've got the ability in our hands right now to change the tide there. It's kind of like, and I'm getting ready to close, I know. It's kind of like how you're in the ocean, okay? And let's just say you go up in a, a spaceship or whatever, okay? Anybody got imagination still? And you drop this big ball off in the water and it creates a splash what you don't know is four miles in that direction in about an hour the repercussions of that splash hits and so what we do right now can change the tide and affect the future way over there y'all realize that? We can, change, we, can, we can have something to do with the lives of people way down the road by the good works we sow right now. But if we're not focused, if all we're doing is just working, working ourselves into a frenzy, we ain't getting nowhere. Kind of like that old guy said, he rode a, a wooden motorcycle. He said it went wooden, wooden going nowhere ain't getting nowhere but sometimes if you don't look in the mirror sometimes we're sitting on a wooden motorcycle and we've got our headphones in because we're distracted and we're not focused very well and we feel like we're covering ground we really ain't getting nowhere mm closing with this Colossians 3 23 he says and whatsoever you do do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men you hear that verse 24 knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance that's the hope we've got it's not only that we're going to sow good works but we're putting up we're putting up a 401k on that side we got a retirement on that side. We might be a little weary when we leave this side, but it's really that side that matters. And what we do here 
determines what happens over there. Stand with me tonight.